we going to tell them? What are we going to tell them? We saw one like a few one of a million people. No matter how hard it might be to grasp that lights actually make these patterns in the crop, there are indeed indications that point in this direction. Several eyewitnesses claim to have seen lights actually making crop circles. He has an unbelievable story to tell. He had spent the night doing a night watch on top of Oliver's castle. It was a cold and wet night and nothing happened. He fell asleep but was awakened by a strange sound in the early morning hours. As he got up, he saw bright balls of light rushing over a wheat field below. He grabbed his video camera and pressed record. When we take a closer look at this remarkable footage, we see several interesting similarities between these lights and those filmed on different occasions in later years. For instance, once again we see the acceleration feature. of a light into two separate lights also was captured by John Smith. And how about this feature? No matter how far the lights travel from the camera's lens, they do not become smaller to our perception.
Despite all these anomalous similarities, many people still believe the Oliver Castle footage to be a hoax. The footage is simply too good to be true. But then, in the year 2000, scientist Dr. Elcho Hazelov from the Netherlands delivered what appears to be a convincing and ultimate proof. If you perform trivial experimental physics to the plans in these crop circles, you can in fact deliver scientific evidence that these balls of light might very well have caused the crop circle. Inside crop circles, uh, it was discovered five or six years ago that the nodes, which are the, the knuckles in, in the stems, are actually much longer, quite often. And it is suggested that this increase in length is a result of heat. The nodes get warm, they expand, it's a thermal expansion, and they remain long afterwards. So you can measure the increased node length. And that's exactly what he did. He sampled several crop circles and very meticulously measured hundreds of nodes. The outcome was crystal clear. The nodes had expanded the most in the centers of the circles. The closer to the perimeter of the circles, the less the nodes had expanded. Dr. Hasselhoff then compared this distribution model of node lengthening with several other mathematical models and discovered a 100% match with one of them. The mathematical model of electromagnetic radiation distribution of a point source. If you take the electromagnetic model for a point source, which is a ball of light, it's a small source of electromagnetic radiation, and you look at the intensity distribution of this radiation on the floor level, then it's something you can calculate. It's easy. It's straightforward physics. You can compare this with the light intensity distribution uh, from a light bulb hanging on the ceiling. Right below the light bulb there's a bright light and towards the edges it gradually falls off towards darkness. And this can be determined quantitatively. If you know the height of the light, of the light, of the lamp, you know exactly what the light distribution is. And it turns out that the node lengthening, as measured in the field, corresponds perfectly to the distribution of a small electromagnetic source hanging above the field. And when I say perfectly, I mean perfectly. This is not rocket science, this is trivial experimental physics. And the statistical relevance is 100%. So when somebody says this crop circle was made by a ball of light, which is a very strange story, the physical evidence corroborates this perfectly. It perfectly supports these eyewitness accounts. Dr. Hasselhoff's paper was peer-reviewed, accepted and published in October 2000 by the internationally recognized scientific journal Physiologia Plantarum, the consequences of which were overwhelming. For until scientifically proven otherwise, it is now a scientifically accepted fact that at least some crop circles were generated by balls of light. Researchers and scientists were left baffled. He later stated that the downed crop was very hot. The whole circle seemed to be buzzing with the energy's heat. Three years earlier, August the 11th, 1996. John Whaley comes rushing in the barge in, the central meeting point of crop circle researchers at Alton Barnes. He has an unbelievable story to tell. He had spent the night doing a night watch on top of Oliver's castle. It was a cold and wet night and nothing happened. He fell asleep but was awakened by a strange sound in the early morning hours. As he got up, he saw bright balls of light rushing over a wheat field below. He grabbed his video camera and pressed record. <laughs> 